thank you for the lovely songs and the way that we could just sing to the Lord with all our hearts and give him glory. Welcome every mother that is here this morning and happy Mother's Day. You know, I can testify this morning that I'm here this morning because of my mother's prayers. And I'll share a little bit about that this morning, if you don't mind. But I'm here because my mother prayed for me. But she's passed on like some of our mothers has passed on. And we're just lighting this candle in memory of our dear mothers that has passed on to be with Jesus. In honor of them. May we never forget. When God created um, moms, he did a special thing. Men so special that we can't understand them. So special that kids think they have a, a pair of eyes in the back of their heads. So special that kids believe that moms can see them wherever they are, even if they're not with them. <laughs> And because of that, I believe that when God created the woman, he created woman because he wanted to portray to the world what God's heart is really like. Because a man is a man, and we'll see it in the story. I'm going to tell you two stories, one story from the Bible and one story from history this morning. Is that okay with you? But there's some precious lessons in that. So our first story will come from 2 Kings. Um, and I read from in, in chapter 4. I'm, I'm going to tell you the story because it's a lot to read. So what happened here is uh, uh, Elijah and his servant Gehazi, they used to travel to Shunem to, uh, to go and do whatever God told them to do. And when they got to Shunem, there was a Shunammite woman uh, that invited them for lunch. And, and ever since then, whenever they traveled through there, they went and she, they provided them with a place to sleep. Eventually, this woman said to her husband, this man of God and his servant, they always come through here. Let us build a little room for him and put a bed in there and a little table and a lamp so that when he comes, he's got a place to rest and a place to sleep. And so they did that. And then one day when... when um, Elisha was there, he said to Gehazi, his servant, he said, go and call the Shunammite woman. So they called the Shunammite woman, and he said to Gehazi, now just imagine, that's a bit funny, because, you know, I always picture, why do they do that? Now, here's Gehazi, his servant is right next to him, so he says to his servant, so he called the Shunammite woman, she's standing there, he said to his servant, ask this woman what she needs. <laughs> <laughs> because she's been good to us and she's given us a room and a place to stay and food. Ask her what she needs. So she says to Gehazi, she's got a place within the community. She's fine. She doesn't need anything. Gehazi says to Elijah, no, this woman says she doesn't need anything. Okay, that's fine. The woman can go. So he's lying on his bed there. The Bible says he was actually, in, he was lying on his bed and he said to Gehazi, go call the Shunammite woman again. So he calls, her the, he calls her again. And the woman stands in the door and he says to Gehazi, ask the woman um, uh, if, um, you know, what is, her real, what is her real need? And then she said, well, she doesn't have a son. And Gehazi says to Elijah, well, this woman doesn't have a son. And while lying in her bed, I can just imagine lying there just so much uh, under the anointing of the Lord, just so relaxed, just saying to this woman, Next year, this time, you'll have a child. God will give you a son. And she said to him, please, don't, don't mess with me. Don't tell me things. Don't make promises that's not going to be true. You know, we all be already old and all that. But the next year, that time, she had a son. And when the son grew up a little bit, uh, one day he was out in the fields with his father with a harvest. And when he was out in the field, he was saying, uh, oh, my head, oh, my head, oh, my head. He's, he had a terrible headache, and it wasn't just a migraine. And this is why I say a father is not as sensitive as a mother. So the father, and I think most fathers will probably be like that, 
said to the servant, listen, just take the son to his mother. I'm busy. I don't have time to sort this guy out now. Take him to his mother. So they took him to his mother. And his mother took him, and she sat with him on her lap. Until the afternoon, the son died. Now, your mother will do anything to protect you. I want to speak to the, to the youngsters here for a moment. I want you to listen to what I'm saying to you now. Your mom will do anything to protect you. Your mom knows that you need a prophet in your life. Your mom knows that you need God in your life. How does she know that? Because she's walked the walk. She's been where you were. She's been there. She's gone through all the trials. She's gone through all the tribulations. She's gone through all the temptations. She's gone through all these things. And as years went by, she became wise. And because the wisdom, men have also got wisdom, as you can see. But the wisdom needs the compassion as well. And that is where a mother comes in. They've got a lot of compassion for their children. And they will pray for you. And she, and in Kings chapter 4, verse 21 to, to 25, this mother then took the son, and she laid the son on the prophet's bed, on Elisha's bed. And the husband, and she said to the husband, get, the, get your servants to, to get me a donkey ready. I need to go and find the prophet. And he said, well, what's, you know, what is wrong? She didn't even tell him, the father, that the son had died. And off she went to go and look for the prophet. Now, I want to read this for you to you from verse 21 to 25. She went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door and went out. She called her husband and said, Please send me one of the servants on a donkey so I can go to the man of God quickly and return. Why go to him today? he asked. It is not the new moon, moon or the Sabbath. It's all right, she said. She saddled the donkey and said to the servant, Lead on, don't slow down for me unless I tell you. So she set out and came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. When, she, when he saw her in the distance, the man of God said to his servant Gehazi, Look, there's a Shunammite. Run to meet her and ask her, Are you, are you all right? Is your husband all right? Is your child all right? And she answered, everything is all right, she said. If you ask a father at any time, is your wife okay? Is your children okay? Are they fine wherever they are? He'll go, yeah, I'm, I'm sure they are. Probably they are. If you ask a mother, is your children okay? She'll go, that one is not okay. That one is okay. That one I'm praying very hard for. She'll know exactly where the children are and how they are. She'll know exactly how her husband is. If he left this morning out to the field and he wasn't good, she will say, my husband's not well today. There's something that's bothering him or he's got an ailment or whatever. But she knows every detail. And when the, 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 the when Gehazi asks her, is your husband well? Is your son well? Is your family well? She said, they are all well. She was not telling the truth. Her son had died. But she, told, she didn't tell the truth, not because she wanted to lie, but because she had so much faith in God. She had so much faith in the prophet that she didn't even tell her husband the son is dead because she believed, she must have believed, that the prophet will bring her son back to life. And therefore she said he's well. In faith, he's well. Listen, listen I want the kids to listen yet. To me this morning, I want you to. I want you to know that your mother knows everything about you. She knows whether you're well or not. She knows your heart. She knows what you think. Sometimes she can read your mind. <laughs> not really, but it sometimes seems that way. So she told the prophet to come to her house, and. He sent Gehazi, he says, go, run. When he heard that, he, he says, run, go, go to the sun. We will follow on. When they got there, 
the prophet then went into the room and he he actually walked up and down and then he laid on the sun his nose on the sun's nose his eyes on his eyes his hands on his hands his feet on his feet and he he could feel the warmth coming back into the sun's body and then he got up and he went out and then he went back later and he did the same thing and then when he got up he said to the sun sun get up stand up and the sun was back brought back to life now this mother he, he then gave the son back to the mother so the dad never knew the son was dead I want to tell you kids something you girls if you want compassion if you get hurt and you want some compassion go to, don't go to your dad go to mom okay she will cry with you she'll have compassion on you boys you go to your dad and you cry he'll tell you hey man come on man cowboys don't cry in front of other people you know come on you're a man you know uh, and, and if you like me if, if the boy falls or gets hurt you'll first have a little giggle <laughs> and then he comes around to you crying and you go <coughs> oh shame are you okay <laughs> that's a good fall eh? <laughs> so so that's the heart of a mother it's much different than that of a father so but what i want to say to us mom knows that you need god in your life mom knows that you need a pastor or a preacher mom knows you need a prophet in your life why because that is the way to eternal life and she wants you to be with jesus one day so she'll do everything to protect you she will look for the prophet she will make you go to church you know when i was young i had no option sundays was church day whether i felt like it or not whether i coughed or not whether i wanted to or not mom my homework's not done well that's fine monday your teacher will sort you out church day sunday morning and evening both services we had no option i want to tell you one thing youngsters today i am so grateful to god that my mother did that to me because it was there in those times i found god and i started to serve god and love god with all my heart and i wanted to go to church i didn't want to miss church anymore because I had a mother to discipline me. I want to th say to you youngsters, thank God for your mother's discipline. She disciplines you because she loves you. Not for any other reason. The second thing a mother does is she puts her hope and faith in God. Now, where's my notes? I think I'm running ahead of myself here. just want to make sure I'm not running ahead of myself here so she puts her hope and faith in God in 2nd Kings 4 verse 26 she ran at uh, the, 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 the Gehazi ran to meet her and asked her the question is it well with you it is well with your husband is it well with your child and she answered all is well Ephesians 6 verse 1 listen children I want you to listen to this he says obey your parents in the Lord for this is right verse 2 says now this is the uh, the first promise that came uh, uh, with with the reward basically he says honor your father and your mother this is the first command really actually with a promise honor your father why verse 6 says that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land the Matthew 5 14 says for God commanded honor your father and your mother and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die and you go wow this is a heavy God eh? this is one of those hyperboles I just call it hyperboles hyperbolic hyperbole whatever okay it's it's it's, it's exaggerating what you want to say to make a point okay so God says if you do not honor your mother and your father if you revile your mother and father you need to die it doesn't really mean you're going to die but he made he made a point how serious he is about this to honor your mother and your father so 
I just read that. I just read that to you. Mothers, never underestimate your, the power of your prayer. I'm going to tell you a story. It's a true story. Is it okay? It's a story that actually happened in Australia. But first, there's an example of how God treats mothers, how God loves mothers. I'm going to read it to you because I know you can't really um, read it there. In um, um, Luke chapter 7, verse 11, Soon afterwards he went to the town called Nain, and his disciples and a great crowd went with him. And as they drew near to the gate of the town, behold, a man who had died was being carried out, the only son of his mother. And she was a widow, and a considerable crowd from the town was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, Do not weep. Then he came up and touched the bier, and the bearers stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to you, arise. And the dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. See, even God knows how a mother's heart and how, how, how much compassion she has and how much love she has for her children. And she was a widow, and, had, and she needed her son. And God gave her her son back because he had compassion on her. There's a scripture in Psalm uh, 56.8 that says, You have kept count of my tossings, my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? Now, let me tell you the story. The story began in 1820 when uh, a young man ran away from home and he joined the Navy. And he never saw his mother again for 15 years. <laughs> and he got on, in 1829, he got on, on a ship called the Mermaid. And in October the morning, uh, one morning, the, s the sh ship set sail to Sydney, Australia, for Collier Bay. On the fourth day, the storm struck shortly before, mid before mid midnight. Huge wave pushed the ship on the rock, and the ship mermaid sank. Miraculously, all the crew could survive. They sat on a rock, cold, waiting there for help. Three days later, another ship with the name Swiftsure came along, rescued all that crew, took them on board, and set the sail again. Five days later, a current swept swift shore against the rocks, and this sh ship sank. Later that day, another ship, the governor ready, rescued all the crew and set sail. And three hours later, that ship caught fire and sank. <laughs> now... The, sh the crew from the very first ship, Mermaid, was now all, all involved in this. They, they were in every shipwreck, every time they survived. Another ship from Australia, the Comet, blown off course by a storm. Now just think of this. Does this, this sound like coincidence to you? I don't think so. All right. Came along and rescued all the crew. There was 32 crew on that ship already. So they rescued the crew that was at sea all night. Five days later, the comet in a storm lost its mass, its rudder, and its sails, and it sank. <laughs> For 18 hours, they drifted in the cold sea, fighting the sharks. Then along, then along came another ship, the Jupiter, and they were rescued. For a fourth time, it was found not a single life has been lost. This is a true story. You can go and read it. Okay. Two days later, the Jupiter hit the reef and sank. <laughs> it, it, you see how we laugh at these things, but our mother is sensitive. If she know, okay. In any case, two days later, the Jupiter hit the reef and sank, but the passenger vessel City of Leeds was close at hand to take them all on board and transfer them to safely to Sydney. Five ships had been lost, and the crew of the mermaid had been shipwrecked five times, yet no one was lost. On the city of Leeds, there was an English woman from Yorkshire, and her mission 
which she told the, the, the crew earlier on was to go and find her son that has been lost for 15 years, that ran away from home. And she prayed. She says, my only prayer is that I'll see my son. Now, she's, she's, she was old and she was frail and she started to lose sight. So she couldn't see that well anymore. So the captain of the ship decided that this woman is not going to live long. He spoke to the doctor, Dr. Thomas, um, whatever his surname was. Um, uh, said this woman, you know, she's, she's not going to live long. How c can't we make a plan to just find someone on the ship to pretend that he's the son, uh, just to, to 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 relieve a pain and make her feel good before she passes off passes away. So they did that. They were going around and they found one of the, the one of the men that was on Mermaid the first time that went through all five, five shipwrecks, and uh, and that that matched the description that the woman gave and says, "I want. Could you help us? This this woman that she's dying. She's lost her son 15 years ago, and we want." someone to just pretend that he's the son just to to, to relieve really her pain so that she go in peace so he agreed to do that and as they stood at the door of the cabin where this old woman was lying the captain said to this uh, actually the doctor said to to this man he says now i want you to pretend that you are peter rightly when you go in there you'll find susan rightly she's the woman that lost the son 15 years ago. And then this man started crying. And the doctor said, what's wrong? He says, I am Peter Rightly. That is my mother. And for 15 years, she was praying to see her son again. How many of you mothers have been praying for your children? And you think, God, are you never going to hear me? For 15 years, what you do not know is that God protected that son through five shipwrecks at sea. What's the odds of that happening? So that he could give her a son before she died. But you know what the good thing is? Happiness is a good healing, good medicine. Because that woman lived for about another 20 years in the house that her son built her. Because she found a son. That's the love of a mother. That's what it does to a mother. When she can see her children and see them happy. And know that she's done the best for them. So that's the story. Now, how to honor our mother. Now, this is not just for the, young, the youngsters here. This is also for us. Because the word is as, as applicable to the youngsters as it is to us as adults and as is applicable to us as adults as it is to the elderly. So, how to honor your mother. Forgive your mother and father. They all make mistakes. I'm sure we've gone through life realizing that sometimes we feel we've been treated unfair by mom. She's put some restrictions on us. And I want to tell you, kids, do not hate your mother for the restrictions she puts on you. She does it because she loves you. She does it because she cares about you. She does it because she, she knows you need a prophet in your life. She knows you need a pastor, a church, someone that will take care of your spiritual growth so that you will see Jesus one day with her. Forgive them. Luke 6.37 says, Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Somehow, we sometimes think this scripture only applies to other people, but it actually applies to our own families, to our mothers and our fathers. Forgive them. Because sometimes they do also make wrong choices. But we need to forgive them. I remember speaking to my mom one day, and she was in tears, and she says, I've, I've done so many wrong things in my life, and I just asked God to forgive me. And I said, Mom, you know what? God's grace is sufficient for all of us. We all make mistakes. We will make the same mistakes with our child. But she needs to forgive us too. So forgive your mother, for her heart is with you. I can assure you that. Speak well of your mother and esteem her publicly and, priva and privately. You don't know how much your mother sacrificed you for you. 
young children, even us as adults? Do we know how much our mothers have sacrificed for us? I can tell you about my story just shortly. My mom had five children altogether. I'm the second youngest. The youngest daughter, the youngest sister, I never knew her. She died in the hospital from a heart condition when she was a year old. And my mom stood at her grave. Then many years later, my other brother committed suicide. My mother, no, my first, my dad passed away. My mother stood at his grave. And then she brought us up all by herself, having to work, having to struggle through life. But she met Jesus and she decided this is what her kids need. And we went to church. My other brother, my one brother committed suicide because he left the way of the Lord. He went off the rails. He committed suicide. She stood by his grave. Then my sister died of a massive heart attack, all before they were 32 years old. She stood with by her grave, stood by her grave. Then my eldest brother died in a, in a way that, that was very suspicious. In any case, he died, let's say, in a car accident. She stood at his grave. And what, two, three years ago, my mom passed away. She had a hard life. But she loved us with all her heart. I remember her praying for me. I could hear her in her room, kneeling by her bedside, <laughs> asking God to protect the children to bring those that has gone astray back to her, to him. I don't know about my brother that committed suicide. I don't know if he's, if, he's, if he's with Jesus. I don't know about my oldest brother. I think my sister was okay. The only thing that kept me to have a good and long life, like the scripture said, honor your mother and your father that you may have a good and long life in this land, was because I kept serving God. But I met God because of her, because of her prayers. That's a mother, a mother's heart. So speak well of them, honor them. You don't know what they've been through. You don't know, you know, sometimes you, the, the youngsters think they have an opinion. They're smart enough to have an opinion. Mom is wrong, but let me tell you something. If you think you're smart, it's because of your mother that you're smart. So drop your opinion. We don't have opinions. We could give her the credit by saying, you know what, if somebody compliments you for doing something good, how about saying, you know what, my mom taught me to do that. And I want to give her the glory for that. Because if it wasn't for her, I tend to one would not have learned this skill. If it wasn't for her prayers, I tend to one might not have been here today. Seek her wisdom. Proverbs 20 verse 29 says, The glory of young men is in their strength, but the splendor of old men is in their gray hair. And that applies to mothers too. I know you youngsters say, but my mother is not gray. Ha ha. Believe me, she is. You just don't see her dyeing her hair all the time. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Your mother listened to you from the first day you were born. From the first cry you cried, your mother listened to you attentively through all the years up to, you up to when you became a teenager. Then you be became so clever and so wise, she didn't want to listen to you anymore. But when we grow older, we, st we start to realize, when we start getting wisdom, we realize that mom was never wrong. She was always right. We should have listened to her. Job 12.12 12 says, Wisdom is with the aged and understanding in the length of days. Youngsters, and even for us as adults who still have our parents, wisdom is with the age. I want to say to the youngsters here, just, just by the way, just maybe that might sound funny, but you you teenagers and you might get to a point uh, some sometime where, where you bring a boyfriend or a girlfriend home or mom discovers you. Now let me tell you, if mom says, to you girls, that boy is not good for you. Believe her. He's not good for you. 
Joseph, mom tells you that girl is not good for you, believe her. All right? <laughs> I had some girlfriends, not serious, and mom was never happy with them. But when I brought this girl home, mom says, that's the girl for you. Now, I didn't marry her because of that. I also thought so. But mom was happy with her. And I listened to mom, and I'm not sorry, just, just to let you know. I'm not sorry I listened to mom. Support and provide them. You know what is the most heartbreaking things that we see in the day we live in? That parents get dropped off at old age homes because they've given their inheritance to their children, and the children forget about them. You know what the Bible says about children like that? Now I'm talking about children that's 50, 50 years old and 40 years old. Okay, I'm not talking about small children anymore. We need to honor our parents. We need to provide for them. We need to look after them. Because one day we will also get that age. And what you sow is what you'll reap. And the youngsters can take note of that. Because you will reap in your kids what you, all the hell you gave your mom. Sorry, just, a, just the insert. Okay. <laughs> Do not cast me off in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength is spent. Second Corinthians 12 verse 14. For children are not obligated to save up for their parents, but their parents for their children. And that is good. Mark 7 verse 9 to 13. Jesus rebukes the Pharisees because they did not want to look after their parents. They used the law to say that we don't need to look after my parents. And Jesus rebuked them and he says, you look after your parents. You honor your mother and your father because that's the first command with a promise attached to it. You will have a good long life. So I want to say to and all of us, even us that's already 50, 40 and 50 years old, if we want to live a long and good life in this land, honor your mother and your father. That is scriptural. Love your mother. Show her that you love her. Josh, when mom drops you off at school and wants to give you a kiss, don't be ashamed of it, my, boy, my friend. It takes a man to say, mom, let me give you a kiss. Thank you for dropping me off at school. I've heard many stories of kids being ashamed of their parents and mom dropped me around the corner. How must mom feel about that? After she's done everything, she sacrificed her whole life to bring you up in the fear of the Lord and to give you the best. Hugs goes a long way. How do we feel when mom hugged us? Can we re remember that? It was a wonderful feeling when mom came to you and hugged you and says, man, I love you. How do you think mom feels if we as kids go and hug them and say, mom, thank you for what you've done for me. I love you. Thank you for dropping you off at school. You are not too cool for school. Thank you for praying. Thank her for praying for you, for her. And we need to pray for them too. Youngsters, you kids, I want you to listen to me. I want to ask you a question. Do you actually pray for your mothers? That should be number one on your prayer list. Let me pray for mom. Let me pray for dad because of what they do for us all the time. Don't take it for granted. The Bible is applicable to the children as much as it is to adults, and the Bible is applicable to adults as much, much as it is to elderly people. I love you, Mom. And with that, I'm going to conclude. And I just want to say, you mothers, don't forget the story of Sarah rightly. Don't ever stop praying. I know there's mothers here. That maybe your hearts are aching because your children don't want to serve God. They've gone astray. They've done their own thing. Keep on praying. God will hear your prayers. He, he does hear your prayers. And he's putting things in place like we see. He's protecting them for the day that your prayer will be answered. Let us pray together. Father, we just thank you for this morning. Thank you for your word. Thank you for mothers. Thank you that you have implanted in the mother something that only a mother has, and that is the compassion and the love of Christ for her children. Thank you, God, for the mothers we had. That is the reason why we are here today, because of their prayers, because of their love, because of their caring for us. 
I thank you, God, and I pray that you'll bless them. Those of us who's lost our mothers, Lord, thank you for the good memories we can have. And Lord, where we have regrets, I just pray, Lord, that you'll heal our hearts so that we will move on and say we've done what we've could, we could have done. What we didn't do, we ask for forgiveness for. But bless this mom, these moms here this morning, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.